Oh, hey, dudes. All right, so I've done a ton of ton of context or what content on like warm up routines and whatnot, but I haven't updated it in a while. And my warm up routine is always like subject to change depending on the angle of the sun. That's a joke. I'm just kidding. But it is subject to change just because constantly changing everything. That's just the way I am. So I actually have a backpack specifically designed for my warm-up, um, sponsored by Oats Specialties. Discount Robbie 10, Robbie with a Y, case sensitive. So bullpen day, we're gonna open up this bag of goodness, show you what's inside. That, what is that? Oh, that's rosin. All right, so first things first, two, two kilo bell clubs, then a five pound extreme duty cuff weights, leather. Then you have your plyo balls and then, well, baseball glove, not by out specialties, connection ball, baseballs, not by Oats specialties. Um, a seven and an eight ounce baseball, oat specialties. I, um, I warm up with this as you guys will see. And then have their bands with wrist cuffs here. So I'll run you through this. And again, my whole thing with warm up routines, I'm not a slave to it. I don't need it. Um, but if I have the time, I do it. Now, another thing is, is like I put a lot of emphasis behind always being prepared, always essentially having my body ready to fricking attack, right? D don't see a cheetah stretch before it catches its prey. And I'm a fricking cheetah. But in all seriousness, um, I just try to be active, try to avoid long periods of sitting down and so on and so forth. So uh, let's see. I'll show you, I'll run you through exactly how I kind of approach the warm up. I usually always start with the stuff that you guys obviously didn't see, which is more of a dynamic warm up, um, you know, some sprint work, blah, blah, blah. But as far as the warm up with the gear that I just showed, I always start with bell clubs. These are two kilos. Uh, I would actually recommend a lot of people watching this to go with the one kilo, but start it with single arm. Do about six to eight revolutions. Probably a little bit less emphasis on the non-dominant throwing side, which is my left side, unfortunately. So then we'll go inward, six to eight. I like the heavier clubs actually, because you, you have to like utilize the positioning of the hand and leverage the club. Very similar to how I would teach optimal throwing mechanics. I actually have a lot of stuff if you're just watching this, don't know who I am for the first time, I have a lot of stuff on bell club usage um, and optimizing the arm action. And we'll go left. I don't get too fancy with my club work during my warm up, during my training, although I will get fancy. Ow. It's always a good idea to turn your hat backwards too when you do clubs during my training. I will get fancy though. Do a lot of different stuff. Okay, those are clubs. You can even like if you, like I have the one kilo over here, and sometimes in my one kilo I'll do like dry throws, like so. You can even throw the one kilo. Okay, then I'll go straight to these bands. I'm on a time crunch, like always. So I'm just gonna use one. Not a super over complex routine here. I have a lot of content on like J-band routines. Again, shooting six, eight, ten. For me, the big, big thing is I don't want to, I don't want to overdo 
anything in my warm up. I want to save my best version of my physical body for when it matters. So I'm always been a guy, historically speaking, I don't need a whole lot to warm up. Like I got out of the car and I was pretty much ready to rock. What up, dude? Living the dream. And another thing about my warm up that you won't see me do is like static stretching. I have completely stopped doing any like static stretching. I just think. Again, this is all individual dependent, obviously. Do what you want. Placebo effects can, can have a huge influence on this. But for me, it doesn't really do a whole lot. Now we'll strap on this wrist cuff. And here's the thing, wrist, cuff, wrist cuffs and bell clubs, personal experience and personal opinion, very similar. You can do either or, depending on if you have either or. Um, the one thing that I will say that there is probably scientific context behind is with the club, you're obviously having to hold it, which is gonna contract some of those wrist, hand, finger muscles. And with the cuff weight, you can not do anything. It's the same thing when you do like cuff bands compared to like holding a band. There's some stuff there. And again, time crunch, I'm only going to use one wrist weight. My wrap sodas are sitting there, probably gonna overheat. Same with my iPad. All for the content. So, as you can see, not a whole lot of stuff going on with the, uh, the wrist weight, just because I have the bell club. But you can substitute, get the same out of it. Okay, and then you progress to your plyos. I used to be, I say this on numerous occasions, used to be the biggest plyo guy in the league. Always do plyos. And now I rarely do plyos just because again, obviously plyos for me are, are different, more so targeted towards like my drill progressions and whatnot. But in terms of, you know, a, a strict plyo ball routine, hey, hey, that's gonna be a good day. You know that. And now we're back to square one. So again, plyos for me is more so targeted at drill progressions over a warm up. But everyone's different. If you're watching this, take a note. I have a free ebook on my website that covers um, all my plyo ball drills and all my plyo ball routines. Like I said, I used to be a big plyo ball guy. And uh, it's a free ebook. You can pick it up, therobbyroshow.com forward slash free dash plyo. So if you're interested in that, be sure to go pick that up. <laughs> I got the first one and then I had an off day. So warm up plyos, I'll do pivot picks and then I'll do like a walk in. And then I'll do like a, a rocker step back, something I'll actually incorporate, like I said, with a little bit of drill progressions in my warm up. But I am on a time crunch, so we're gonna get going. 32 ounce again, O specialties. Um, but I keep my plyo balls pretty heavy during my warm up. Okay, so now. I get to my 
throwing. Start with an eight ounce. And do take note that I am alone. So this is all subject to change if I had someone playing catch with me. And I don't recommend you throwing these into the fence. Just because if you want these things to last, it's probably not the best idea. And I even just made a hole in mine, so we're grinding. And I could, I could get fancy with these, with my eight, seven ounce overload baseballs. I could do like regular throws as you see me do now, or I can do like add it into my drill progression stuff that I could implement if there's something specifically that I'm, I'm working towards. Now, um, take some of these balls, get some long toss in. As soon as I can throw one into the tree, which is about 300 feet away, uh, I'll be warm, ready to tow it up. Yeah, there we go. Oh. And like I said, everyone's different, right? Like, I don't expect 12 year old to watch this and think, oh, the first throw that he can make with a baseball in his hand is gonna go 200 feet. Gotta be intelligent. All right, so we're at two hops. This throw will be a one hop. Next throw will hit the fence, and then the next throw after that will go into the trees, which is over the fence. Okay, I lied, that one hit the fence. And now this one, hopefully there's no cars coming in to that lot. This one will go over the fence, into the trees. Oh. Nope, hit the fence. Can't end on that one. Oh, car coming. That could have been bad. It's just stopped right where I want to throw it. Hopefully my precision is good. Ah. Frick, man, that ball didn't come down. That tree eats more balls than, I'm not gonna make a reference there. 